this is a fun demo for me to do because I wasn't supposed to do it. Uh, Andrew, we can link if you go to the Slack channel, which is the URL. Which Slack channel? Uh, go to Con 2024. Oh, okay. And if you manage to get to this place and you hit log in, there's a username for test, and then there's a test one through test nine, and they all have the password of test. So you can log in to test two, the password of test. You can log in to test three, the password of test. Okay, somebody made it. I gave you more permissions than you might normally get. You are a content editor. You'll be able to see things. Please don't break my down. That would make me very sad. Um, <laughs> so we set things up. We'll start with Sun and Terra. I'm going to talk a little bit about the tech of what's actually happening here. So, how many of you were at the presentation on Tuesday? Sorry, what was yeah. the locker here? Right. So, username test and test one through nine, so test seven, and the password for all of them is just test. Lower, all lowercase. So, if you weren't, if you weren't here, the, the overview. Sorry. Oh, it's in the Slack channel. If you're not in Slack, you have to copy it for you. What are we doing? We're using open source tools, well known open source tools, to allow collaborative in browser editing, commenting, and change tracking inside Drupal in a secure and FedRAMP compliant manner. Yeah, that's all right. that big night. If you missed the, the big thing. So, I'm not being mean. CK Editor has collaborative editing. CK Editor uses a client server model. Number one, it's per seat license. Number two, when you use it, it sends your data to their overseas servers and then sends it back to you. If you work in the federal government, that is not good. In fact, not to be done. Um, we use a technology which is baked into your browsers, it's baked into your Netflix accounts, it's baked into Slack called WebRTC, which is web real-time communication. Um, that sets up uh, peer-based networking. It says, hey, these people are all in this environment, they would like to talk to one another. And then everything else gets out of the way. In fact, we don't send any data down the pipe. So if this works the way it should, we're all about to start editing this page. But the data is never going to leave my local machine. But the tools in the background, YJS is the big one, uh, will handle that WebRTC socket connection and let us know, oh, Andrew made a change. I need to know about it. Make sense? It's really cool. It's actually very well tested in other spaces, we're just applying it to Google. So, how does this whole of that work? There are two fundamental things, just so you know, I made a page so I wouldn't forget them. Sun and Turn, this is an interesting piece. Um, these are just networking protocols. I don't know if you remember the names of Session traversal utilities for NAT. Okay, fine, what is it? It's the peer-to-peer -peer protocol that just says, hey, everybody in this room is on site. Great. There is a problem, however, if you were like me right now, I'm using a VPN. Some of us work over VPN because VPN obscures your IP address. Turn, however, knows how to handle that. So you actually have to set up a stun server with a turn server fallback. The challenge the only technical challenge that I present to you, which is what I'm going to know, is there are no publicly available free Sun and Turn servers of, out there anymore. So you actually have to spin this up. I'll show you ours. We're running on uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud right now because that's where our client uses. So that's what we do. Um, but you can host this infrastructure anywhere you want to, which from a compliance and security standpoint, is really great because Sun and Turn can be run on a number of different languages and a number of different platforms. So, okay, that's the time. Did anybody actually try to edit anything? What's that? 
Anybody who wants to, it's in the, it's up here in the menu, you start in turn, and you click edit, and then it wait. Okay. You should get this, and when people start coming in, we will start seeing the pop. Oh, look. That's so cool. Okay, somebody should, somebody should post a comment. You notice I'm not doing anything. This is my computer. I'm not doing anything. This is what YJS does. YJS is an open source library for making these protocols happen. For those of you who are technically inclined, what YJS is doing on the background is storing objects that mimic all the things that we are doing and then merging them together in real time. Somebody asked on Tuesday, like what happens if the person's logged in as test four, like their connection goes out? We will auto save that. Um, so there's auto save configuration and a bunch of other really interesting things going on. Um, I do apologize a little bit. Uh, in the demo I showed the other day, we can actually, it, it's not necessarily tied to the rich text editor, which is pros here in this case. We can actually attach this to any form field we want to. That functionality is still in the office, but we can get working on that. Because the person who's supposed to do this demo has COVID. So, I've been working on it. So, now imagine you work in a government agency. This, this is going to be part of the talk later on Tuesday. You work in a government agency, you have to do these online documents. And you need three people to approve them before they can get published. I almost guarantee you that what I call first write through, the first draft that, does not have it in um, It happens in Microsoft Word, or it happens in Google Docs. And then I get email from one person to another person. All of those things open up potential security leads in your supply chain, your network chain. Uh, they also um, don't leave a consistent audit trail. Well, if we can push all of that collaboration into your CMS, right? So you just start with, hey, let's all collaborate on this graph. I have a change record of everyone who's been in this match. And every change that has been made, I let it happen. Now, I will point out too that what's happening is we're, we're sort of auto saving things on the, on the side. There is still a thing you have to work out. Somebody does eventually have to hit the save button before we'll make a new revision of things. Uh, but all of this will be retained until someone saves it. It's considered a new a waiting revision. So if you like close out and reopen this, you get the, the freshest version. It's, it's really quite fast. I'm going to pause for a question. Retain the RAM. I'm sorry? Retain, retain, retain the RAM. Retain, retain the, uh, the question is where is the data retained? Uh, in your Drupal database. Um, there's, oddly enough, there's a, a YJS entity type um, that stores the YJS object. Yeah. So what's happening actually in real time is the WebRTC connection is simply saying, hey, test user 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, test user 2 just moved. You should go fetch. That's all it's telling you. Something happened, you should go fetch. Yeah. Fetch is a relapse. All the right time. So yeah, what, what essentially happens is we're storing those those YJS objects, and then when we save this revision, um, those will get squashed. How do I get merged? Squash is saying they'll get squashed into a Drupal revision. Nice. Other questions at this point? Uh, I just spent the better part of an hour figuring this part out. So let me try to add an image. There's a media bug up there. Next to the word cave. Can the access deny clicking the media button? Oh, that's probably a permission issue that they can take for once. Let me open the video. Because I think what happens when you test this, 
What kind of song I have now? Sure. Actually, I could have. Um, I have a work with S.T. Brown for that time. So it's probably an S.T. Brown. S.T. Brown. Access Media Browser Plugin. Let's say next. Now this will be interesting. I wonder if it'll, if it'll let you get it now or that you have a real page. The Etsy browser is very true. I don't work with it much. Um, I set up in the uh, uh, so that You should, there are three images in there, they're all logos, so we just we'll give you a little text box and say, look, we'll give you one. And it should be. Well, Let me see what happens to my chair. Oh, there's something coming. Oh, somebody got it at the table. So we can do it. Hey, what's the duck? Crossbearer has complete support for YJS. 
What's really interesting, we found out our original task was to make a rich text editor that was collaborative. It turns out that YJS is blind to any form of fear. It doesn't care if that is rich text or not. Which means when we start looking at things like Starshot and Experience Builder, we can potentially plug into that. Theoretically, though not, not the network, theoretically we can plug into things like administrative forms. So that we can all go to the same page and collaborate on configuration. Which is wrong. So we'll pause for other questions and then I'll show you a little bit of the config stuff. I'm gonna save I'm gonna save this and see what happens. And then I'll show you the vision. Um, I'll go ahead and publish what the heck. Oh yeah. That's the classic group of links. Somebody officially owns it. Can't remember how we're solving this one. Did somebody else? Did somebody else get saved? Again, a few bucks. And he then actually made a revision. Who would do it? Is that the one we were just messing with? No, that's not. Come on. How do we break it? Someone changed the hex format. Oh, don't do that. I mean, we can. We can. Um, on this site, if you mess around with it, I actually have CK editor also running. So one of the other nodes is just using CK editor is you can. Okay, oh, we changed the text. Okay. I don't know how we've actually changed to like, solve the saving problem, but But it doesn't have all of the changes we just made. So I don't know what just happened. I feel like Validation. For example, if there is a address field and you have the zip code, yeah. which is incorrect. So every single snapshot, only when you save, that's what you're going to do. Yeah, so the question is, when does Drupal level field validation kick in? This was a simple basic validation. It doesn't matter here. Well, it's a little bit more than that, like. Honestly. Why JS isn't actually trying to save the Drupal node yet. It's created a placeholder that refers to its own object interpretation of the node. That's a weird way to say it. That's what it is. It's kind of like a shadow column of the content. Very good. Um, so only yet. We're not actually interacting with the form submit action yet. So I think since someone changed the, the input filter, we lost all our changes because it happened. All right, I apologize. But my demo, you can go to other pages and mess around. The, the other piece is a little bit weird, again, since it's live collaboration. The collaboration, the socket is based on what website are you coming from, what branch are they and what entity are you actually paying? Which means that before you can collaborate on something, you actually have to create and save it first, and then send it out to them and say, okay, we're going to go work on node 4 now. Not a whole lot to be done about that, but there's lots of good people to do. Um, okay, how does this stuff actually work? Let's go to well, step one. This has stuff that you can't see because there's lots of security keys and all kinds of other things. Um, so you could copy this URL, but you wouldn't be able to do it. YJS actually shipped to the demo version, so you can run this on your local machine without needing a dedicated server. Uh, it doesn't work if you have a VPN running, which is weird. Because then you need to turn for it. So this is just a configuration for what we're doing, which is, hey, where's the networking protocol? And by the way, I'm a little stunned on this network Wi-Fi. Yeah. Me running a firewall, me running a VPN, and Android, it all worked. Uh, but that's how solid the networking back end is on. Are you still in the I'm just going to let that 
<laughs> I can't make a better joke than that, so that is the best joke. Um, so we have that level of configuration. This one also came up, the content module. I normally have a much bigger monitor with much larger tech, so I'm having a little trouble. <clears throat> um, it does work like, like CK Editor, we're using the editor module in Core. Um, part of our ambition is to put this into Core, by the way. Um, so you can drag it to a bar, right? You can make different changes. Uh, this came up in a call yesterday because someone asked, what happens like if one of my users lose their internet connection? Ah, we have auto save defaults. And I've got it set, and I can't do this math. 300,000 milliseconds is what? Three seconds? Three seconds? Sorry? Yeah, I can't do that. Five minutes? Okay, so it's auto saving every five minutes. Um, there is actually a configuration option for auto saving on timeout, which is nice. Um, on timeout is also useful because it doesn't make all those Ajax requests in macro. Um, so the higher its number is, the sort of less server intensive it's going to be. But if you have it set to on timeout, it's just going to say, oh, wait, somebody just disconnected. I better say it. So that I don't lose their changes, which is really nice. Uh, and that's, again, baked into YGX and what it's doing. Uh, comments are optional. You can turn them on. You can turn them off. And again, this whole thing works on a plug-in framework. So you can add new stuff. We are intending, once we get set, to release it all as open source. Right? So if there's a Browse, if there's a toolbar plugin, uh, you know, one of these buttons is missing, you don't have to you won't have to wait for us to write. One of the reasons I will point out that it's not released yet is that personally, I mean, I'm a Drupal developer, I've been Drupal developer for almost 20 years. As soon as we release, we release this stuff, we're going to get old web that supports for Grosner, support requests for Grosner. Why does it do this? I will tell you, you can test it, you can't just swap C editor for Grosner because they use different markup on back end and so bad things happen. So we're not prepared to support that. And answer the 20 questions a day that are going to come into Drupal, the Drupal website and say, why is there not this button on Grosner? Because we haven't written it yet. But again, we want to put a good solid framework out there. Uh, and we want it to be open and we want it to be available. It's not much in the config, but it's interesting. I'm trying to remember. I think that's all of the configs that really matters. Where's your, where's your server? How are you doing a wizard? I can show you the way we've got it set. If I go look at the form display for the basic, you see this text field collaborative. This is what will make the title collaborative. But again, it's not showing cursors right now for reasons that I don't have time to do. Um, are there other questions that I could answer? I mean, we've only gone 25 minutes, which is fine. I don't need to stand here for your time. Yeah? You were talking about how this can do collaborative configuration and editing. Theoretically, yes. Theoretically. I mean, I, I can't even imagine how that would work in terms of like the configuration of imports and, and what's going on. You know, what it does, what the question is, how would collaborative configuration editing work? Right. I would see it mostly in framing sense. Actually, it's probably the only case I can come up with for it right now. Like, hey, I'm going to show you how to configure this. Like, I have trouble getting an entity browser set up correctly. Um, and somebody else on my team had to do it because I never messed with that much. So I can see cases where you might want to do that. You um, might. I don't have a good use case for it, actually. But, again, if you just think about the case that what is it enabled? 
I can buy any form element to collaboration. Okay, there's all kinds of things that people can come up with that I don't know anything about, but that might be useful. Is it useful to go into the, what, the Drupal site settings and collaborate on, what is that? Site name? I mean. You could, yes, you can make this collaborative. What would, what would happen? Let me go back to the second part of your question. What would be happening if we collaborate on this page? What would be happening is that YDOM, YJS, would be saving sort of a shadow version of this form to temp store, temporary store. Right? And then when someone finally hit the save button, then we go into regular config. So it should be fine. It shouldn't really be a problem. But yeah, it's a weird use case. We were more excited about, excuse me, the field level integration when we started talking about things like the experience builder. Because then we were talking about like, dragging components onto the page and editing them in real time. But you can edit them collaboratively. Now that's really fascinating. <coughs> excuse me. We could be collaborating without both of us changed, right? I could be making the changes, you would be the second eye, making sure it must be something really important and when we're going to submit it, that we know 100%. But it comes with more comment than a question, but it's an actually a suit comment, which is, hey, if we were collaborating on a form like this, probably only one of us would be doing anything. The other would either be validating that you did it correctly or learning by watching, right? Because you'd be able to see, oh, the admin is in here making these specific changes. Right. And that's maybe better than looking at the pull request that has the change config. Right. Okay. In, in the, the editor, as you're collaborating on it, is, is that something also with uh, track changes, where you can approve individual changes, versus approving all things at once? I don't believe we have individual level change tracking yet. Okay. I think that is a roadmap feature that is not currently there. You can individually approve and close comments. That I know. Okay. Um, but I don't believe we have this concept. I saw an approve tab when you were in the test page. Oh, the approve tab is, is a little bit different and I will show you where that is. But if I'm in here and looking at the comments, I can see comments that tag me or tags that, or that I made. And I can see things that are resolved. So, like, here's a comment, right, that someone made, and I can, if I can see it, I should be able to. I don't actually remember how to. I wasn't on the dev team. Did I mention the developer with head code? There is a way to, maybe I can only resolve my own comments. Oh, that was up there. It's not where I thought it was. Because I have bad eyesight. Yeah, I've been on that last come out screen a little bit. Yeah, why? But it only opened on that one, which, because that's my comment. I own that comment. Worth noting, by the way, these are not Drupal comments. These are white comments. They are independent of Drupal's comments. Just FYI. So yeah, I have administrative permissions over my own comments. So edit, resolve, red, red, delete. So I can resolve. Um, so yeah, approval is another thing. This this approve tab. How many of you use content moderation? Okay, <clears throat> I wrote this on a brand new Here was the customer use case tied to this workflow. They wanted all of this workflow to happen, all the revision tracking to happen in Drupal, and then they wanted certain people to sign off for publication. But those people had to be ad hoc assigned to each piece of content, and they might go on vacation, and when Bob is on vacation, Carol has to approve it. So they didn't want to do any role based or permission-based approval Okay, so there's now a module available called Workbench Approver, 
we're eventually Kruger, and we actually have been. Prior to the Yeah, this is published, you can't get approved for it. Essentially, what it gives you is a user interface to assign people to approve things. If you're using content moderation, it won't allow the moderation state to change until one of the approvers says yes. So it just locks the state in place, which is actually very, very helpful. So there's also a module in Shakespeare's Board of Action Approver called Board of Action Approver Lock that locks it so that only people with the approval list can edit the note while it's in that state. And our client, who's a state government, uses that to be able to say, okay, well, while it's in draft format, these three people can work on it. They're going to, they're going to pass it to the next people. To the next people, to the next people. They do that, and again, it's really a weird ad hoc model rather than by permanent role. What makes group? Go down it then. It's super fun. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of our clients, like, they have Google Docs or Office 365 in general, and when we brought up the concept of collaborative editing and Drupal just has an idea. They're like, well, it doesn't matter what we do, we can't force people to not use Google Docs or Office, and that's what they're going to do because if they're non-Drupal part of their work, it's part of their own system. So like, have you, what have your, your client conversations been like, or are you actually waiting to get this to a, a more sort of, I'll say, productized, ready to use state before, like, you know, suggesting that? That was a big question that can be repeated for the recording. And it was essentially, hey, this is great collaborative editing. Drupal actually replaces Office 365 and Google Docs, but our team already uses that for other reasons. And you're going to find them out of our portfolio that hand. Pretty much. Right? <clears throat> okay. And then there was a the question about how do we address that problem? Are we still waiting for sort of the product strategy a little bit further along before we address that problem? I mean, that's an organizational governance issue. Yeah. Like so many things. I mean, I love it. Every word for a you know, We run into the same problems all the time. And the answer is always, well, that's a governance problem, a technology problem. Yeah. I mean, yes, one answer is you just remove access to Google Docs, right? I mean, <laughs> One of, our, one of our government clients actually can't use it, so that's one of the reasons they use it. Um, really, it comes down to... I, I cut my teeth in the newsrooms, and so I asked that question, where does the first write-through happen? Where does the first draft happen? Where does ideation happen? And if it doesn't happen in your CMS, how are you tracking what people are working on? So, the real big governance piece, especially for agencies that are responsible for public documents and public records, is, oh, by the way, here's a complete history of this thing. And if you're moving from Google Docs or Office into your CMS, you lose that. Right? And especially if you're emailing Word documents or right? which we don't have to do anymore, but some people still do. So that is a big thing. Um, our client came to us asking for that like, please stop us from doing this because it's killing us. Right? But it is a very significant question. Like, what is the actual tolerance for this? Or is it just kind of cool? And, and I would be honest, I have tried to launch Drupal-based products before, as many of us have heard mad, but sometimes they fall over under their own weight because you can't generate enough effort to support them. Anywhere. So, excuse me, we're still in a closed bay right now where we are going, aren't we? going through those use cases. Uh, what's the actual use case? How are we going to use it? Which features are the most important? What kind of support does he pay in there? Is there a what kind of support is there for CTF or there isn't any for CTF that is the most proprietary tool for this, which uses a client server model. Um, I think I said it okay. when some people work here. Um, so you have to use that. Okay. You, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. 
theoretically, you could find YJS to see Taylor, but they would probably get very mad at you because we wonder about their business plan. So, yeah. I mean, I gave a, we gave a version of this talk in a Drupal Con Portland, like, hey, let's put this in Drupal 4. And the CK and their teams didn't approve it, and were not happy. Uh, they kept asking me questions about feature parity, and I'm like, well, it's open source, we can write whatever you need, so here are the ones we wanted in. They didn't want that answer either. Uh, yeah, I just saw the moment, but it's not for the morning game, just simple game, but usually there'll be the website. Okay, so if I understand the question correctly, we've been looking at a really simple use case of the body field, which has a rich text to enter on. And this is where the fact that we can bind YJS to any form of really helps. So if we had a paragraph, for instance, that had three fields on it, we could create, or we already have created, uh, a collaborative text field type. So you can just use that form widget and Google calls it instead. It would automatically plug into Y Y Y not YJS work. YJS is the, is the technology on the back end that's handling all this. So there's a, a fairly large JavaScript library handling all of this. So what you do is you tell it, hey, I want this part of the form to be readable by YJS. And our default version of that is the rich text editor. But you can attach it to anything. So I'll show you again. So this goes to your question. Oh, we might be able to. I don't know if I have paragraphs on this site. Ooh, I do. Look at that. Let's add a paragraph. And it's fun to oh, Ignore that. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Fields. That is really weird. Uh, create a field, and we'll just make a plain text field. And we can make a rich text field, but I'll just make a plain text field. Uh, we'll call this text also. Yeah, we'll just make a text field. Okay, this is all default stuff. Let's just set it. And then when we manage the form display for this, I can set that to text field collaborative and it'll make it YJS square. So since this is an open source framework, all that is is a Drupal, what they call it, entity vision? It's a field vision. It's just a field vision. And so we can, again, we priority order. Go through and start collaborating, making them collaboratively order. So like the path field is not a text field, so you can't do it. It's actually not configurable either, so you can't do that. Um, but URLs and things can't be done this way yet, but there's nothing stopping us from making it work better. Did that get to your question? The question has to do with basically commenting on individual field level elements. I don't know the answer to that question. I have never tried it. Um, theoretically, yes. It might just take some more. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, while we're collaborating, we have comments, where do they go once we publish the thing? That's where I use the term squash. I, I think this is a, you know, 
architectural decision that can be overturned or extended? I believe the answer is. I don't know where that's going. Uh, well, they're all still here. They're all still here. But if I say this, do they disappear? They're, they're still there. I actually don't know the inner workings of this. I believe at some point they will vanish. Uh, perhaps if I make a new draft revision, they may go away. Okay, so now I have a latest version. When you edit, in this case, it's editing the latest version. No, they're still there. I didn't write this I apologize. All right, officially, I think we are over time. Okay. Room on it. Room to it. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Two whole minutes. One last final question. Final question. Yes. Maybe who is a hacker? Who is a hacker? I don't know. I haven't hacked since Bitcoin. I think that's just someone having some fun. <laughs> Probably Andrew Berry. No. No. I would have asked. If they were still here, the person would, would point them out. Of course, you don't like the test set on the test point. Um, I appreciate everybody coming up with this sort of wild hack. You know? I'm a little bit amazed that it worked this way. And I appreciate everybody's time and effort. Thank you.